Hello everybody. Welcome to another episode of Works. I am your host. I am Shemaine Laney. I am a fitness and nutrition expert, biohacker and certified iridologist and I am very, very happy to have you back with me on this cool December day. I hope you're keeping very well and getting ready for the holidays and some downtime. I know I am and I know after the year we have had many of us need it and can't wait to put our feet up and just kind of let our worries go for a few days. So in this episode I kind of wanted to go through how we could strategize the holidays where we might be able to offset some of our choices and mitigate maybe some extra calories and just kind of give you some strategies. Now I have shared podcast episodes that I've done over the last few years around this time of the year of surviving Christmas and tips for Christmas and um, stress management for Christmas and all that. So this is kind of going to be like a summary of everything with some directions on what I actually will give to my clients. There is not going to be any medical advice in this podcast episode, but just to make sure I have my angles covered, I must remind you that the information in these podcast episodes is for informational purposes only and should not be taken as medical advice, please do consult your health practitioner before making any lifestyle changes. Okay, so it's been a tough year. A lot of us now are kind of gearing up to not only relax for the next week or two, but maybe indulge in some of life's pleasures. And rightly too, I mean, I'm looking forward to having a few days off. I just want to put my feet up, turn off social media, not even look at the news and just chill out for a few days. And I know many people are in the same boat. There won't be as much kind of family interactions this year, unfortunately, no Christmas parties, not much going to visit family, but that doesn't mean that we're not going to kind of indulge in extra food or treats over Christmas. If anything, I feel some people might indulge a bit more to comfort themselves or get that serotonin that they'll be missing out on from seeing family or going to the Christmas parties or celebrations. So I mean it's a catch-22. You may not be eating as much as you would if you were visiting people and you may actually be eating more to comfort yourself because we all know that well I assume that we all know but the people that follow me and my clients generally know that when we consume treats or carbohydrates chocolate or the so-called comfort food as soon as that stuff hits our stung our tongue excuse me it stimulates the body to produce serotonin which is our feel-good comforted hormone which is why we do feel good when we eat these foods and we crave more of these foods because of that feel-good reaction especially in times of stress or sadness or loneliness we will crave these foods more because our body wants that kind of security feeling that hug that we get from these foods and the serotonin um they that basically this is why our body craves them it wants us to feel good it wants us to feel safe and feel like yes you're surviving everything is okay um but we all know there's also a ripple effect of constantly doing something like that i have never once in my career told my clients to not enjoy christmas i have always said at the very least take the three days off of Christmas Eve, Christmas Day and St. Stephen's Day or Boxing Day as they call it here in Canada. I've always said I take those three days off to just 
indulge and chill out, I would like my clients to take those days. Not only does Christmas only come once a year, you can't always be 100% on track. You have to be able to be flexible enough and disciplined enough that you can enjoy these times of the year when they do come around. Um, so disciplined and I mean that we put the work in during the year so that we can enjoy Christmas and Halloween and vacations and other celebrations. So we put the work in so that we have that flexibility around the holidays. Um, and of course, this enjoying the holidays is very, very important for our mental health and our adrenals and our hormonal cycle. And just kind of giving yourself that time to chill out. Don't stress. Don't track your food. Don't overthink what you're eating. But do you have a plan? Do you have a plan? There's this old saying that, well, I don't know if it's old, but people say it all the time. I don't want to undo my hard work. Uh, so if they've lost a lot of weight, so I have... I'm thinking of one or two clients. So one of them has lost 25 pounds over the last few weeks. Uh, one is pushing towards 40 pounds. And I'm just thinking of those two. They don't want to undo their hard work. But realistically, even if you do put your feet up and indulge for those three days, you're not going to put on that much weight. You literally might put on two or three maximum four pounds over the holidays and anything else you see on the scales is going to be a reflection of inflammation and fluid retention and that is it that's what that reflection is it's very rare that people put on as much as they think they do over the holidays um, I've had clients maintain with a good strategy so they enjoy Christmas and they always say they do um, and they maintain, I have had clients lose over Christmas. Um, so lose weight or body fat or depends on what way you're looking at things, but lose on the scales. So it is doable to enjoy Christmas and still either maintain or lose or only gain a couple of pounds. Like realistically, people are not gaining 10 or 12 pounds of body fat over Christmas and New Year's. Like that's just not happening. So most people will gain on average three or four pounds and then anything else reflected on the scales is that fluid retention and inflammation. Um, some people, some women, more so than men, because of our lovely hormonal system and our complicated reproductive system, we can retain up to six pounds of fluids. Like that's quite a lot. So remember that if you step on the stale scales after Christmas. But otherwise, um, I want to kind of summarize some of the strategies I'll give to my clients over the next few weeks. I'm mostly available um, for people that have questions or are panicking. Um, so the first one we always generally look at is the fasting strategy. So fasting is an amazing tool. I really don't like people to abuse fasting, but to have a proper respect for fasting and outlook on fasting. It drives me nuts when I see people overeat and then they say, oh, I'm just going to fast the next day. And then they get stuck in this vicious cycle. And it's an abuse of fasting where they think I can overeat and then I'll fast. We would like to have fasting as a tool used strategically. That if you knew you were going to say multiple Christmas parties or multiple dinners or family events, not that we're doing that this year, but if you did, then you could either fast longer during the day of the event if you knew that you maybe were going to be having dessert and alcohol as well. And I know I sound contradictory, but bear with me. So you have this planned event and then you have a planned strategy for the day. You might fast longer or maybe you might skip one meal. Um, you might then maybe skip carbs at lunch because you know you're going to have your carbs at dinner. There's all these different strategies we can use. Then we also use body awareness the next morning. 
you may want to fast longer if you feel gross or if you've noticed any negative effects from overindulging the night before. Maybe you've noticed your bowels are off. Maybe you have diarrhea. Maybe you're farting a lot, which is a key sign that you've disrupted your microbiome. Maybe you have some acid reflux. Maybe you have uh, you had a terrible sleep because you overindulged in that last meal or the evening event or the party or whatever it was. Maybe, like I said, you have the inflammation where you can feel the aches and pains through your body. Maybe you're dehydrated. So there's all these different aspects and biomarkers that we look at. So if you wake up the next day after overindulging the night before, you might fast a little bit longer not to so much so offset the calories but more so to give your body a break let's focus on hydration let's get our bells back in line maybe we might just have bone broth for that day to heal our guts or support our guts or apple cider vinegar or blueberries or something healing and supportive um, so we have these strategies where we can make plans this is what I'm going to do and this helps offset some of the negative effects that can happen over holidays and not just Christmas but all holidays when we do look at those different biomarkers how can we offset different things how can we stack conditions in our favor I speak about calorie harvesting and offsetting a lot with my clients that if we have certain foods before like high carb or overindulgent purine rich meals if we have certain foods before them we can slow down the breakdown of sugar we can support our gut and our microbiome um, we can manage the insulin a lot better we'll extract less calories from that meal um, so there's all these different tactics and offsetting methods that we can do and I know some of you are saying like what like what well, I'll give you three that I use with my clients. If you have blueberries before a high carb meal, you can slow down the absorption of the sugar from that. If you have a really good whey protein shake, you can then offset um, the carbohydrate absorption and the calorie absorption of that meal. So you get less calories. Um, another thing you could do is you could have an organic Granny Smith apple befo before um, a very rich meal or junk food or something like that to help support your microbiome but also offset inflammation. There's lots of studies to support that apples not only help mitigate inflammation but they start working as soon as you start eating that junk food. So they offset the inflammation when you're eating and after you're eating so that's a powerful tool so straight away you've got your blueberries you've got a really good quality whey protein shake and then you've got your organic granny smith apple most people can get their hands on them um, so there are some ways of offsetting there's also then having other plans if you know that you're going to have that high carb meal or eat extra food today even on christmas can we plan some exercise around that? We know, and the studies are there, I've posted a lot about this, that when you walk for 35 minutes or more after dinner, you improve the blood sugar regulation, you improve digestion, you offset some calories from that dinner. So maybe you could go for a family walk after Christmas dinner. I know it's not what most people have in mind. Most people like to put their feet up and watch a Christmas movie but you can plan stuff you could go for a walk maybe after your big Christmas morning breakfast um, on Christmas Eve not many people work out on Christmas Day some people do but not many but on Christmas Eve and St. Stephen's Day people will generally work out like they normally do so it's good to work out especially training hard and heavy on those days if you're going to be having extra treats on those days because then your muscles will absorb a lot of the calories. So if if muscle growth or hypertrophy is your goal around this time of the year, then those are great days to be training heavier and harder and eating more because you will get that um, growth aspect of the muscle tissue. Um, the, when we look back at a fast, 
Most people think just don't eat. I speak a lot about, well, the magic of fasting actually happens when you eat because that's when you're giving your body the nutrition that it needs to heal and be amazing. What about the first thing you break your fast with? So there are different bacteria in your microbiome that do different things and there's sects or phylums of um, and families of different bacteria that are known to make you lean, cause you to absorb less calories from certain foods, keep you healthy, help offset some of the damage of specific foods. So these these bacteria are amazing and we know there's those good ones and there's also the bad ones that cause you to absorb more calories from your food so we might both eat the same chocolate bar for 200 calories and maybe if I have really good bacteria I'll only absorb 100 calories from that chocolate bar but you maybe you have bacteria ratios tilted in the wrong direction and your bad bacteria absorb the full 200 calories so there's that aspect and I know it's a bit sciencey but here just to simplify it what it, what would you break your fast with to tilt the bacteria in the good direction where those bacteria work in your favor they help you break down carbon a lot better so that's your fat cells they help you absorb less calories they help boost your metabolism they keep your bowel movements regular what would you break there so i would be looking at breaking my fast with high polyphenolic foods dark chocolate blueberries green teas also my tart and bitter foods because these good bacteria love them but the bad bacteria hate them so we kill two birds with one stone we feed the good ones and we kill the bad ones so if you knew hey okay we were out with we overindulged last night watching a christmas movie or whatever we had christmas biscuits and baking and whatever so now i'm gonna fast longer today but oh shoot we also have this big meal planned tonight and wine and whatever so i'm gonna fast a little bit longer to give my body a break but i've planned that when i break this fast i'm going to stack conditions in my favor and i'm going to have um blueberries for my first meal and protein away protein shake and i'm not a big proponent of having protein shakes for your first meal or actually any meal I generally look at protein shakes as a tool to be used for offsetting or for medical conditions. I I use them in different ways. But that's something to think about. There's also a lot of research on chewing. I'm, I'm confident nobody has said this to you before. So chewing speed can affect how much you eat and how many calories you absorb. So the faster you chew, and there is a lot of research to back this up, the faster you chew, the higher the likelihood is that you are going to gain more weight and absorb more calories. The slower you chew, the less food overall we see consumed in a meal setting but also we absorb nutrients a lot differently so not so much calories as in we're breaking down the foods a lot more through the through the chewing aspect so we're feeding the right bacteria we're absorbing the nutrients better getting them to them healing spaces that they need to be and we're also burning more calories with the chewing and the digestion aspect of it so that's something to consider so there is research showing that people who chew their food more and slower have less likelihood of being overweight or gaining weight in specific meal settings so just think about that um sleep of course i have to discuss sleep and hydration i think everyone knows at this stage that sometimes when you're feeling hungry or not satisfied it is hydration but when we look at sleep we know that one per nights of sleep can increase your insulin resistance by a lot in some people tenfold 
also when you have poor sleep you generally crave more junk food so if you're trying to stay somewhat in control over the holidays you want to focus on sleep because you don't want to be waking up craving sugar and not making choice smart choices maybe in the first half of the day if you know that you're going to overindulge in the second half of the day so this also comes back to that if you had an evening meal late on a friday evening with alcohol then you'd want to be offsetting that meal you maybe want to have some magnesium vitamin c and activated charcoal with a lot of water before bed so that it doesn't mess with your sleep so that you wake up your insulin levels are better in the morning you're more in control you sleep better the activated charcoal will bind to any toxins and chemicals so sleep should be a focus I'm hoping for more sleep over the next few weeks as we don't have to get up for school. I am taking a few days off work. So I'm hoping for that really restore and regenerate my body and my adrenals. Because sleep is the number one tool for adrenal issues and adrenal fatigue. It is. is Sleep is our top tool for that. So then sleep helps with control around food. It helps us focus a lot more therefore we can make smarter choices sleep then helps with that insulin resistance or insulin sensitivity whatever way you look at it when our insulin resistance slash sensitivity is not good we generally crave more sugars Um, if we're very tired again our brain is going to crave a quick source of energy which is sugar so you got to stack conditions in your favor if then you notice that you're eating certain foods and you're noticing acid reflux or maybe you're farting a lot or you're belching or you're bloating or your bowels don't look normal not everyone looks at their poop but they really should so if your poop looks hey that's not normal or that's skinnier than it normally is or it's more runny or if anything like that happens you need to take a stop sorry you need to stop and take a look say hey maybe today is not a good day to overindulge if I've been doing it for the last few days and now I'm feeling the side effects or maybe today I'll just do a fluid fast or I'll just do some gut restoration or something like that those are key symptoms that you maybe have pushed your body a bit too far and what I mean is most of us can get away with a day or two of overindulging especially if you're used to leading a really clean lifestyle but then when we start pushing into those four or five days of overindulging we're like oh now I'm feeling the negative effects of this and that's when you really need to stop and um, reassess the game that you're playing because you could make things a lot worse for yourself and cause some damage that will take longer to fix or heal so you need to be aware of these different reactions in your body that can occur when we overindulge too much so yes we have we do want to indulge we want to put our feet up we want to enjoy the season But we don't want to overdo it either because there are some negative effects that you won't fix by eating clean for a day or two. They're going to take longer than that. And believe me, you can do some severe damage over a few weeks or sorry, even over a week of going a little bit over the top with nutrition and alcohol. Like you can do damage pretty, pretty fast. So if you look at the gut, we can turn over our gastrointestinal tract in like three days. It happens really fast. If you look at eating something that's gone off or stale, you can experience the side effects of salmonella or food poisoning in less than an hour. So these things can happen very, very fast. So just be aware of that and monitor any reactions that you may be having um, in your body or from overindulging or even certain foods. Um, there are obviously some foods that will cause a lot of issues with people 
the biggest ones that I tell people to watch out for really are those hydrogenated and trans fats. So your toxic oils, your vegetable oils, they're going to be the biggest culprit for inflammation, illness and disease. So watch out for those. There are ways to offset those. Um, you can take spirulina tablets. Um, they have been shown to offset some of the damaging effects of trans fats or just spirulina in general. I have spirulina powder. Um, also bone broth and glycine. So you can either take bone broth, which contains glycine, can offset some of the damaging effects of trans or hydrogenated or toxic fats. You can also do collagen will have glycine. You can do some sort of gelatin putty or gen pudding or gelatin gummies will have glycine in it so there's some tools there chlorophyll can be helpful if you're taking a chlorophyll supplement um, I have a liquid chlorophyll that I can pop into some sparkling water it's mint flavored knock that back so you can offset um, then if you're looking to kind of help your body metabolize sugars and larger carb meals a lot better I would go back to kind of looking at those preload foods, your blueberries, your apple, your protein, but also apple cider vinegar. Uh, you can take good cinnamon pills or even just adding cinnamon to everything. So you could do that apple with cinnamon on it as a preload meal. You can add, and I do this a lot, I'll add cinnamon to my protein shake when I'm doing that preload meal. meal. Uh, you can take cinnamon pills. Berberine is a favorite of mine. I love berberine. You can do bitter melon. So there's a lot of stuff that you can do. So to refresh on that, we're looking at using fasting as a strategic tool. Be smart. Make a plan. Know where you're going to use it properly and not abuse it to try and... Um, offset calorie excess calorie consumption and stuff so have a plan use it properly um don't abuse it and like oh i can eat whatever i want today i'll fast longer tomorrow i can eat and then you keep doing that all the time and you get stuck in this cycle you don't want to do that then look at the offsetting tools that you could have we call them preload meals then we look at support your gut bacteria because those guys are going to be the main players in calorie harvesting calorie harvesting being how much energy or calories that you extract from certain foods look at what will be the first meal that I break my fast with so I stack conditions in my favor um how can I optimize my sleep if I've had alcohol and extra rich foods later in the day okay I'm going to support my magnesium pathways so ATP but magnesium also is a big part in alcohol metabolism I'm going to take some activated charcoal so that I can bind to any toxins and alcohol and help that get out of the body better I'm also going to take some vitamin C to support those glutathione pathways and the anti antioxidants lots of water I'm trying to rush this because I don't want to keep you for too long um, and then we look at okay what tools can we use to kind of manage sugars or excess carbs a lot better metabolize them better improve our insulin resistance then we're looking at our apple cider vinegar cinnamon berberine bitter melon um, we're looking at walking after meals as well um, and then making sure that you're just hydrated all the time because that will support those detoxification pathways that when you eat all these extra foods over Christmas they have to go somewhere and they're going out your detoxification pathways whether you like it or not unless you get severely constipated and you are not moving at all so they are going out your detoxification pathways those being through your urine through your feces through your sweat through your breath Breath, through your tears um, pretty much any way they can get out and those are all your detoxification pathways so you're going to need water to help with the movement of those waste products and you're also going to need the water to help with the movement of um, your lymph fluid and your blood and this is where your exercise comes into your walking and all will support that lymph flow the blood flow the oxygen flow through your body the detoxification 
exercise fresh air walking generally are going to support that good sleep too so i mean i don't think this episode is too overwhelming i think you've got some very strong key strategies there that you can implement that are not making you feel like you're too restricted or you're punishing yourself like you can still very much enjoy christmas but have that nice balance where you've got these tools you've came up with a plan but you can still put your feet up and then after christmas and then after the new year so there's those few days between christmas and the new year after the 27th for me because um on the 27th i'm usually pretty good but it's also my son's birthday so we might have like cake or a dinner or something there but definitely the 28th 29th 30th most of the 31st i'm back on track then i'll enjoy christmas or sorry new year's eve we generally do something nice on new year's day back in ireland it would be a big family get together but we don't have a family here so things are a bit different but we always do something nice and then you have your plan for january 2nd this is how i'm getting back on track i'm going to maybe do a cleanse or i'm going to get back on track whatever way you want back in the gyms if the almighty came and opened the gyms back up here in alberta by january 2nd that would be amazing but have that plan so you lots of tools here enjoy your holidays listen to the other podcasts they're a bit older so you'll see some recommendations may have changed in them but they're super super good i may be biased because i created them but they're really good and helpful so go back and listen to them too Um, i'm gonna leave it at this because i don't like to go over 30 minutes generally i hope you found this helpful i really hope you use these tools and strategies don't hesitate to reach out to me if you're confused about anything i've said or you just want to know how to use something specifically or um, you can message me on facebook or instagram at shemaine's model health or you can go to my website shemaine's model and there's um, a button at the top of the website there that has um, a contact page so there's a couple of ways you can reach out to me please share with any of your family members or friends that may benefit from this that have maybe mentioned oh my god i'm worried about putting on the christmas pounds or whatever um so yes have a very lovely christmas i hope to do another episode a fun one before i take a bit of time off over christmas um take care stay safe have lots of fun do enjoy those treats enjoy this time of the year um i will hopefully see you for one more podcast episode for 2020 but otherwise i'll see you guys in the new year or on the flip side as they say um so we'll see you then and thank you thank you thank you for following me and supporting me and leaving reviews and sharing my podcast for another year i really really appreciate it so thank you guys so much so happy christmas and a very 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 happy new year for all of us okay bye bye